He's been dubbed Mr. China. Liam Casey is the CEO of PCH International. You may not know that company's name, but you own some of their products. PCH creates, designs, and delivers tech products for three of the top five PC manufacturers and three of the top five consumer electronics companies. We're not allowed to mention the name of his clients, but by that description, you can probably guess. PCH is based in Shenzhen, China, the commercial engine of the world's fastest growing economy. And I spoke with Casey to get an insider's view of how a Western business can successfully build in China now. With the, the wages increasing is actually, is actually a good thing. If you look at where the wages are increasing, it's in the Pearl River Delta where the, the workers are actually getting more money. Okay, which is great because what they're doing is they're saving and they're spending as well. So they're sending it home to their parents and their, their families and they're actually buying on the domestic market, which is for everyone, if the domestic market in China grows, um, they're real big spenders when it comes to even imported brands. So brands from the US or from Europe, they like actually acquiring those kind of, uh, buying those brands. So I actually think it's not necessarily a completely bad thing. Um, and the Chinese economy, I think, if you look at, you know, some of the trends in China, e-commerce is growing at a huge rate. Um, you look at what the, the government are saying for the, the next the 12 to 5 year plan is a big mm -hmm. part of it is to increase the income, uh, to double the income um, in China, which is also a, not necessarily a bad thing. The price of living is going up. The price of putting food on the table is going up. Some people estimate well into the double digits. Is that w what you're experiencing? Are the people you're employing finding it harder to make ends meet? We've been there since 96. In 2003, we made a decision that this is no longer going to be a low cost manufacturing location for us. It's not not just about low cost, it's about high high quality products. So we need a very skilled workforce. And if you look at, especially in the Pearl River Delta, if you look at the e ecosystem that we work with of suppliers, the skilled workforce, the logistics, um, and now access to data on a live basis, you can actually manage a global supply chain out of Shenzhen, out of the Pearl River Delta, better than anywhere else that we've seen. This for us is not, it's not about cheap labor. It's not about low cost. What's it like trying to build a business within China? Have you felt constraints? Um, actually, we haven't. I mean, we, we went in there first in 96. We operated um, operated in China since 96. We opened our first Wolfie in 2004. Your first? Wolfie. It's a wholly owned foreign enterprise. So okay. we don't have any joint venture partners. Um, we actually operate our own uh, facilities, our own companies, um, and no interference. And again, this is one of the, the questions that James Fallows found uh, puzzling was that we had no inter no interaction with the government. We'd never met anyone from the government. Um, and again, it's um, especially I think where we operate in Shenzhen, it's real. Uh, it's the commerce engine of China. Jack Wadsworth, Morgan Stanley, who has a private equity fund, invests in a number of tech companies, said, "Right now in China, it reminds him of what Menlo Park was like in the 70s and in the 80s. Is that a fair?" comparison? It is a very good comparison. The energy there, the the, the buzz there is phen phenomenal. Again, when in the Western world, when we, when we when the media reports about China, the first thing you'll hear is quite a lot about the, the counterfeiting and the copying. That's not the threat to the Western world at all. Behind that layer of counterfeiting and copying, there's also a layer of entrepreneurs that are extremely innovative, creative, dynamic, very entrepreneurial. That's the threat to the Western world because these guys are really competitive. If an entrepreneur in China says to you that he wants to be number one in the world in something, you sit up and listen because there's a great chance they're going to be. There What's is the most misunderstood thing? China doesn't understand China itself, okay? So that's the big thing. It's not as if they've, they've got a big game plan to take over the world. It's, they just, they've got so much of a challenge with the size of the country, the, the, the pace of growth in the country. So that's where, I think that's also the opportunity for the Western world to go in there. I mean, and again, um, going back when I went there first, it was completely a knowledge-based challenge. Today, it's, a, it's an execution-based challenge. Back in the, in the early days, if you could just find a factory, the name of a factory was making a product, you were in business immediately. Whereas in today's world, you can have all the factories in the world. You can go to any of the, the, the websites and find any factory to make anything. It's no longer about just finding a factory. It's moved completely to execution. You have to have world-class execution. Um, and you have, to, you have to be able to operate in China to do that. Where's the demand that you're seeing in the factories coming from? Is it more tablets? Is it more smartphones? I mean, what's the interest in the next key product? I mean, our business is in the e-reader business and the, the tablet business and also in the smartphone business. They're the 
areas we really focus on manage the accessory business for those comp for those products worldwide um, we will be the leader in most of those in those categories um, and we see all three growing at a very fast pace time to market is a huge um, demand at the moment and in our business time is often the number one currency and dollar is number two